Back in September of 2002, astronomers stumbled upon an asteroid in an atypical orbit around Earth. This was a surprising discovery for the scientists, as they had believed that the Moon was the only natural object in Earth's orbit. The mysterious object was initially thought to be an asteroid, but as it turned out, it was the third stage of the Saturn V rocket that had been used to launch the Apollo 12 astronauts to the Moon in 1969. This rocket had embarked on a peculiar journey, unknown to anyone at the time, before reappearing around Earth 30 years later. In this video, we will explore how a small mistake in the Apollo 12 mission caused the rocket stage to embark on a 30-year journey through space and ultimately end up in such a bizarre orbit around Earth. The Saturn V rocket consisted of three stages. The first stage had a duration of approximately 2.5 minutes and propelled the rocket to an altitude of 61 kilometers. After that, the second stage would take over and burn for about six minutes, increasing the altitude and velocity of the spacecraft. Finally, it was up to the third and final stage to perform a brief burn to place the craft into a stable orbit. Once in orbit, the third stage would ignite again for the trans-lunar injection burn, which sent the rocket and crew on a trajectory towards the Moon. After the Apollo crew was safely on their way to the Moon, the third stage would detach and NASA would attempt to dispose of it. In previous Apollo missions, the goal was to place the stage in an orbit around the Sun where it would remain for thousands of years. To achieve this, NASA aimed to approach the Moon on its trailing side, where the Moon's gravity would provide a slingshot effect, propelling the rocket into a solar orbit. This type of orbit was considered a wise investment by NASA, as it would ensure that the object would not interfere with future missions. However, the plan did not work out as intended for the Apollo 12 mission. NASA had to redirect Apollo 12's third stage towards the Moon to dispose of it, but the initial path would have brought it towards the wrong side of the Moon. Thus, the third stage required an extra maneuver to change its course, which it accomplished using its auxiliary propulsion systems. Despite the significant change in direction required, the energy expended was relatively low, and this adjustment would have a significant impact once the stage reached the Moon. When it separated, the third stage was moving at approximately 20,000 km per hour but it had to slow down by around 140 kilometers per hour to adjust its trajectory, which would delay its arrival to the opposite side of the moon. Although NASA completed the maneuver, it did not go entirely as planned, and it was later discovered that the instrument unit controlling the entire Saturn V rocket had its own internal guidance system and two transponders to send signals back to Earth, providing NASA with more precise trajectory data after safely placing the rocket in orbit, NASA analyzed its trajectory data and compared it with their desired flight path. If any discrepancies arose, they could issue commands to correct the rocket's course. However, NASA was unaware that the tracking system was slightly off, causing them to believe that the rocket was moving faster than it actually was. In an attempt to achieve the target velocity, NASA slowed the rocket down too much by only 40 kilometers per hour leading to a significant delay in its arrival to the Moon and missing the target by thousands of kilometers. Instead of being released into a solar orbit, the third stage entered a highly elliptical orbit around the Earth, which stretched and pulled in various directions due to the Earth and Moon's gravitational forces over the next 15 months. It eventually stretched all the way out to Lagrange Point 1, where the gravitational forces of the Earth and Sun canceled out. As it passed beyond this point, the Sun began to exert more influence over the third stage's trajectory. To better understand the trajectory of the third stage, imagine a steep hill with a car attempting to climb it. If the car does not have enough momentum to make it to the top, it will be dragged back down to the bottom. However, if it has enough speed to pass over the top, it will be pulled down by the other side. The same scenario applies to the third stage as it passed Lagrange Point 1 and began to be drawn into an orbit around the Sun. Although it finally achieved what it was meant to do, this orbit was far from stable. Instead of being propelled into a solar orbit outside of Earth, 
The third stage was decelerated into an orbit on the inside of Earth, which caused it to complete its lap around the Sun slightly quicker than the Earth. Consequently, it started to drift away from Earth slowly, but it was only a matter of time before it would catch back up. In 1986, it almost did, but it was still too far from the lone point and never got pulled into Earth's orbit. For another 16 years, the third stage continued to orbit the Sun until it finally encountered Earth again in 2002, when the third stage reached its highest point in orbit, known as Apoipsis, the Earth's gravitational pull became stronger than the Sun's for the first time in 32 years. Over the course of two months, the Earth gradually pulled the third stage into a highly elliptical orbit around itself, similar to its previous orbit. At this point, astronomers were still uncertain about the identity of the object, and so they conducted spectroscopy observations to determine its composition. By measuring the amount of light reflected at different wavelengths, astronomers created a spectroscopy graph that they could compare to other known materials. This allowed them to finally confirm the identity of the object as the third stage of the Apollo 12 mission. The object tracked by astronomers was indeed the long-lost third stage from the Apollo 12 mission, which was covered in white titanium oxide paint, just like the Saturn V rocket. Its trajectory was traced back to its departure from Earth's orbit in 1971. After spending a year in orbit around Earth, it was thrown out into an orbit around the Sun. Astronomers calculated that it will return to Earth in the mid-2040s. Despite spending many years racing through space, the laws of physics will eventually bring it back home every now and then. Thank you for watching our video. We hope you found it informative, entertaining, or both. If you enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more content like this. And as always, stay tuned for our next video. We have plenty of exciting content in store for you, so be sure to hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.